But if we are going to hit our targets, we need another driver, a permanent one, and fast. But we are mid-season. It's impossible. So given the circumstances, do you think you can grant us a bit of leeway on the contract? I have the projections. If Connorsport doesn't reach fifth place in the constructors this season, the returns simply aren't worth my time. That was always the deal. And it still is. But with a little extra time, perhaps we... Stop! The deal stands. And without Devon driving, there's now little of interest for me beyond the contract. It's just business. There must be something we can do. So, legacy is obviously important to you, David. As a father, I, I totally get that. So if Devon, your son, can't drive, how about your daughter? Why don't we give the seat to Kelly? No. California will not be signed to Connorsport. Why not? Just, just think of the commercial opportunities for the team that signs her. Hmm? Forget legacy. Oh, <laughs> we'd be, you'd be making history. And you'll be giving a phenomenal talent her first break into F1. It's the right thing to do. Come on, you know she deserves it. The daughter who took her mother's name to spite me. Nah, she'll never say yes. Why don't you leave that to me? The contract still stands, Ackerman. Fifth place, or I'm out next season. One problem at a time, eh? Hey, we need your input on this one. Andreo, have you spoken to her yet? Y yes, we've spoken. And what did you say? She'll be around this weekend. She agreed to come and see me. You mean you haven't asked her yet? Of course not. It's a delicate situation. Uh... I'm sure she has an idea, but, uh, look, it's not just something you casually ask over the phone, is it? Why not? Come on. This is potentially life-changing for her. And the whole family situation needs to be handled with a little, you know, care and respect. Well, when I mean, you're the one that knows her, just make sure she says yes and fast. I'm finding it difficult to keep fielding questions about the future of Connorsport. Yeah, I read part of that interview. Could almost feel you squirm. That bad, huh? Worse. Look, I'll call you as soon as I know. Well, it's a pleasure to have you join us here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, as we proceed through to race day to see just who will claim victory at the Spanish Grand Prix. It's an updated track at Catalonia, and we welcome the removal of the chicane in the final sector, shortening lap times and reducing the total running to 2.9 miles and 14 turns. This was actually the original setup for the track, but it hasn't been used since 2007. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Russell, Norris, Hamilton, Gasly, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Joe, Sargent, Bottas, Jackson, Magnussen, Ocon, Hulkenberg, De Vries, Stroll, Albon, and Noah Bell. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race.
Welcome to the wonderful Catalonia. It's time for the Spanish Grand Prix this weekend. And whilst the season is just a few races old, it's already been one full of drama. So, Natalie Pinkham, who have you got your eye on this weekend? Well, in Formula One, naturally, the conversation is drawn towards those at the top of the standings, both drivers and teams. But I'm really intrigued by the midfield team of Connor Sport. Devon Butler's absence will definitely be felt. There's no doubt about that, both on and off the track. For me, the interesting thing will be how they move forward without him. Indeed, almost as many battles off the track as there are on it for Connor Sport at the moment. And Kasper Ackerman and his team certainly have their work cut out for them this weekend. I know it's been a mad few weeks, mate, but you've always gone well here. So let's get your head down and see what we can do. Come on.
Okay, that puts you in fifth, P5. Okay, mate, we might need to look at a new race strategy after that. I've got some options for you, so go and check your MFD.
approaching the pit window and you're going to be on medium.
that's just five laps of fuel remaining. ideally wanted to see. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Let's go.
Jackson propping up Connor Sport here today. But the big news off the track is the speculation about this team and whether or not they'll see out the season with their current lineup. Well, I think they'll have to sign a new driver, Crofty. It's a gamble worth taking. Well, a mid-season signing will get us all talking, I'm sure, but time will tell. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. Well, Cotter Sport are in a bit of an odd situation right now. So, just tell me, what is it like for you today? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, that side of things, that's not really my job. I, I wish Devon well, but uh, it doesn't really matter to me who the other driver is. So, I'm out there to drive the car as best as I can. And that's all there is to it. Everything else is for Casper and the team to worry about. Most importantly, how is Devon? And how are you finding it without your teammate? Uh, um, yeah, I know as much as everybody else, so, you know, I saw what happened. I'm obviously very worried for him, and as is everybody else, and, you know, I know he's not fit to drive for us right now. As far as I know, he's working super hard to return to the sport, and, um, yeah, I wish him well. Well, there's a lot of talk about what happens if Devon doesn't return. Would Connor Sport be looking for a new driver, do you think? Uh, that sounds like a question for Casper. Um, I know they need to plan for every every situation. That's just the nature of the sport. But you know, if those discussions are happening, I'm definitely not involved with that. And finally, I've got to ask you about this. It's been reported that Mercedes have agreed a deal for George Russell to play a small part in the latest Throttle Zone movie. What would you make of that? Yeah, what's all that about? I mean, good luck to him and all, but... Um... It's not something that I personally find exciting, so... I hope everyone enjoys the film. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, boss. Got another one for you. Yes, I did. Shoot. Uh, nothing major, really. Um, to be honest, I just wanted to thank you. Oh. What for? I'm, you know, just doing my job. No, it's more than that. Uh, well, I know why you stayed on the team. And, uh, well, I won't lie to you, it, it's not been easy. <laughs> yeah, y you can say that again. Yeah, but you really stepped up. It's good for me to know that I've got someone like you to rely on. Always. Yeah. Look, Aiden, I'll warn you, things may not get any easier, at least not for a while, but, um... Well, we've got something in the pipeline. A potential new driver and a damn good one. Who is it? <laughs> I can't say. Not, not yet. It's a bit of a gamble. But if they agree, we could have something special. Nice. And, um... How is Devon? Fine. I think, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, Davidov has closed the door on that one, but yeah, he tells me Devon is in a good place, though. Oh, that's good, that's good. Just you know, keep doing what you're doing, okay? And now, just get out of here. Of course. I'll catch you later, Casper. <laughs> 